everybody, and welcome to another episode of Anchoring Hope. This channel is dedicated to shine the light in these last days. Today I have a beautiful message for you, beloved. The Lord in my secret place, early, early in the morning, gave me an open eye vision. So if you don't know what that is, this is the first time that happened to me, actually. So the Bible says that in the last days, He will pour down His Spirit on all flesh. And people will have visions and dreams, and people will also prophesy. So I never had an open eye vision. I, I did have before closed eye visions where the Lord will speak to me through a vision. I, I have many dreams, as you know. Uh, I have been making videos about my dreams, uh, prophetic dreams, uh, with instructions for these last days for you guys and for me. And today, very early in the morning, led by the Holy Spirit, I opened my eyes when I was praying and I was seeing in, in, through the window. It was completely dark. The, the sun didn't come out yet. And I could see, you know, the, the, the trees in the backyard without any leaves. I mean, it's winter over here and the, the trees are completely empty of leaves. And the, the sky was dark, but it was also like light gray because of the moon. It was completely overcast. And then I started seeing another scenery with my eyes open, focusing on the trees, focusing on the branches. I started seeing with my eyes open, I went like I went into the, the city of Jerusalem and I knew I was there. I was there because of the scenery, because of the of the buildings that you see when you see videos or pictures of, of Jerusalem. But it was there was a bright sky. There was a bright sky, no clouds. But all of a sudden, this, the sky started to open with this great light, stronger than the light of the sun, but it, it ripped open from, from bottom to top. It was almost like there was like a zipper that was being opened. And as the light went through this, it was like ripping the sky apart. As it got bigger and bigger and bigger, there was rays of multicolors of lights, of beams of lights around the, the opening. Almost like a rainbow, but you know, the rainbows are around it. This rainbow was completely straight, like the rays of the sun. And it was all the colors of the rainbow opening. And it's, as, as, as the sky opened more and more and more and more, I saw fire starting to burst at the end of this rays, multicolored rays of light. And then from the fire burning, there was huge clouds of smoke at the very end of the sky. So if you imagine, like, imagine an eagle's eye view, what you have, you're in front of the scenery, and then you have this smoke coming out like that dark powerful smoke coming out at the very edge and then in between you have all these multicolored rays of light like you know yellow and green and, and and white and all kinds of the colors of the rainbow and then this light became brighter and brighter and when i started seeing i saw this huge army of people in white horses and angels flying behind them but right in the middle, I saw this beautiful, gorgeous white horse. And the one who was riding was the Lord Jesus Christ. He was coming and I couldn't see his face, but I could I could see who was leading this army. And he was just riding on the air with his mighty power. I, all I could see was even a brighter light with the shape of a man riding this horse. And as I stand still, the Holy Spirit was telling me, don't close your eyes, don't close your eyes, because usually when I begin to have a vision, I close my eyes to focus more on the vision. But the Holy Spirit was telling me, focus on the branches, focus on the branches on your backyard. And I and I could see everybody coming down from heaven in this supernatural way. And I could see how, I could see down below how all the armies of the world were about to annihilate Israel. They were about to, they were about to kill it and destroy the country of Israel and all its people. And the Lord came down in a powerful way. And when he landed, when he landed in this great valley, when, as soon as his horse landed, one of one of the legs, I saw this reverberating energy. You know, like when, when you see the impact of an atomic bomb, you know, have you seen on TV when the atomic bomb explodes? But it wasn't like the explosion, but it was the energy, the wave of energy that expands rapidly after the explosion. That's how I saw it. And when I saw the armies coming down in, on earth, right on this huge valley where everybody was gathered. I could see how all the enemy armies were, were completely destroyed. 
like an atomic bomb, completely destroyed, but in a miraculous way, all the people of Israel were, were untouched. All the people that were believing in God were untouched. And then the Holy Spirit started taking me throughout the world because it started there, but this wave started just going throughout the world. It, just like, imagine, have you seen those movies when they have a huge meteorite that impacts the world? And see, as, as it touches the world, this huge wave of energy starts burning everything around the world, little by little, like, but very fast. But imagine that, but just the wave of energy. And as the wave of energy covered the entire planet, all the wicked people were perishing right away. But all the people that had a second chance were kneeling down and accepting that Jesus Christ was the Lord and Savior. And they were kneeling down and crying down and just giving glory to God. And it was a global event. And I saw billions of people just kneeling down and looking up at the sky, saying glory to God and asking for forgiveness. But many, many people died also with this wave. So this, it was like the wave was intelligent. So it was consuming all these wicked people, but at the same time, the people that still had a chance, they could actually, they were actually bowing down and giving their life to Jesus Christ. And then I just started like crying and crying. And you know, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I felt the presence of the Lord in my, in my prayer room. And then I finally closed my eyes and just gave thanks to the Lord and just kept praying and worshiping. And my question to you, beloved, is, are you ready? We are living in the last days. Everything started with COVID, but it has been starting since long ago. Israel is the calendar for the prophecies of the Bible. When Israel became a nation in a miraculous way in 1948, the Bible prophesied that thousands of years before in the Old Testament. It has been the only nation that has become a nation in one day. One day, beloved. In 1948, Israel became a nation after being gathered from around the world because the Jewish people were kicked out by the Romans seven years after Jesus Christ went to the Lord, went to his father. And they've been around for almost 2,000 years across the world. And that alone is a miracle because they kept their faith and they also kept their language and they kept their traditions. I tell you because I'm an immigrant. I'm a first immigrant to the country where I live in and my kids were very hard for me to teach them Spanish. You know, I'm of Spanish descent and to keep our traditions and my grandkids forget it. They understand it, but no, that's only two generations. Now imagine almost 2000 years of generations. The, the Jewish community should have been completely assimilated by the countries that they had to run into. But they are the chosen people of God. And that's, I'm telling you this because we are nearing the end. Because Israel is now a nation. And if you see what's happening with the war right now, with the Hamas terrorist organization and Israel and the supernatural way that the Lord is delivering them for, from that. And beloved, I pray for the peace of Israel. I also pray for the innocents in Palestine so that both could actually kneel down and realize that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Yeshua is Yamashia, Yeshua is the Messiah. So my question to you is, are you ready, beloved? And my, my dream was beautiful and it had very detail. And it wasn't a dream, it was an open eye vision. And now I'm going to read to you from the living Bible exactly how it says that. You know, today that I'm actually making this video, the Lord guided me through the book of Revelations to actually see how it's written in, in the Holy Scriptures. So let me read that to you right now. So let's go to the book of Revelations, chapter 19 starting at verse 11 and it says the heavenly warrior defeats the beast and I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose riders is called faithful and true that is Jesus Christ below with justice he judges and wages war his eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped with in blood, and his name is the Word of God. And we know, beloved, that the Word of God is Jesus Christ. If you read the book of John, it tells you exactly that the Word is God, and God is the Word of God. And that is Jesus Christ. Verse 14. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, 
white and clean. And that's exactly how I saw it. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron staff. He threads the winepress of fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and his tithe, he has the name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so beloved, I want you to understand this. A lot of people know what the Lord came to do for us. He came as an innocent lamb. He became human being God. And he came to proclaim peace and love and sacrifice himself in that cross so that we don't have to go to hell to pay for our own sins. He came to save the world as a lamb, as a sacrificial, innocent, God-made person. But when he comes back the second time, beloved, he's not going to come like that. He's going to come as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's coming to finally set the world straight, finally create the justice that we are craving for. And that day, the wicked people is done. No more repentance for them because they have had years and years and chances and chances to repent and they were wicked in their ways and they, with their own conscious mind, knowing that Jesus Christ is Lord, chose the enemy, chose Satan. And that's why they are going to be defeated in a supernatural way. In this time, beloved, in this time, when the Lord comes back again, the veil gets ripped off him. You no longer need faith because heaven will join into earth. And you will be able to see the angels with your own eyes. You're going to live with Jesus Christ if you accept him as Lord and Savior. In this time of grace, where you can still do it by your faith, where it's still very hard to see the Lord like his angels. So let's continue. Verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in, in mid-air. In mid-air, come, gather together for the great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty of horses and their riders and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider of the horses and his army. And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon and the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. So beloved, this is the end. The wickedness will end pretty soon, beloved. In my heart, I don't even know if we have 16 years. 16 years seems in my heart like a long time for the, for the coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ. And if that's true, the rapture of the, of the church was going to be a lot sooner. Maybe we won't even make it to 2031. The church of Jesus Christ will get lifted up in the earth so that the great tribulation needs to happen, which is mercy. It's mercy for the people that still didn't believe in the Lord. Those great years of tribulation, people will still be able to accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, but it will cost them their life. And that's why I'm making this video, beloved, because this open vision is telling me that the Lord is coming soon, is sooner than you think, and the world will get worse, worse, and worse, and it's going to be exponential. Beloved, if you're watching this, if you're watching this, is most likely it's already 2024. And believe me, Believe me, things are not going to get easier. And we're going to get more and more deceived. The nations are gathering already to create a one world government. And they're getting together to remove all the freedoms of people, even in democratic countries. If you don't believe me, Google the World Economic Forum and realize that they even have a name called the Great Reset, an agenda for 2030. The Bible is to billion ourselves, the prophetic in the Bible, is actually becoming alive before my eyes. 
So you may ask, some of you that are watching, how do I actually go to heaven? How do I actually get to be saved from this wicked place? And I'm going to give you a chance right now, beloved. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Lord, the Lord is Jesus Christ, and he came and died for you, and he resurrected in the third day, and he went to heaven, and he's sitting beside Yahweh, his father, my father, through the blood of Jesus Christ, then you will be saved, and you will become a son and daughter of God, and that the Holy Spirit will come and live in your life to guide you in these last days. And it's just an act of faith, beloved. An act of faith. You have to believe it in your heart and then the Holy Spirit will guide you. And if you start reading your Bible after you make this prayer that we're about to make, your, your life will change completely. We Christians, we are not in a religion. We are in the truth. We are in the way, which is a narrow way. That's why we pray for our enemies. We only don't pray for our families and our friends. We especially pray for our enemies. Because we want them saved because Jesus doesn't want to, to have anybody having to go to hell and die forever. He wants everybody to be saved. And that's why he's moving his people like me, that I never had the courage to be on a camera and talk about him. Because we're in the last days, and the Lord says that the harvest is ready. We need to start collecting the harvest. So, beloved, there is still time. But the time is running now. And I know that the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit is speaking through you right now. So let's close our eyes and say this prayer with me and make sure that you mean it, beloved. Let's close our eyes. Let's put our hands in our heart. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much, Lord, because you are giving us visions, Lord. You are giving us dreams. Your spirit is being poured down over all flesh in these last days, Lord. And it's a privilege for me to give the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I dedicate the rest of this prayer to all the people that are listening to me that are about to do this prayer. So, beloved, this is your turn to speak after me. Dear Jesus, I now decree and declare that you are my Lord and my Savior. I decree and declare that you came to earth 2,000 years ago. Being God, you became human to teach us how to live this life and to die in that cross for me so that I don't have to go to help to pay for my own sins. I declare that there is nothing I can do for me to save myself, that I need you as my Savior, and it's a free gift based on faith. Lord, I ask you to forgive all my sins in the past and to guide me in the future, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. I invite you, Holy Spirit, to come live in my heart and cleanse me from my wrongdoings and cleanse me and deliver me from all the evil influences in my life. Lord Jesus, now by the power of your Holy Spirit, I know that I have been saved and that your name is beside my name because you're writing my name in that book of life. Lord, I dedicate my life to you and I decree and declare that my entire life is yours because you paid for it and you made me, Lord, in your glorious name, Jesus. Amen. Beloved, if you did that prayer, type amen in the comments. If you need me to pray for you, type it in the comments. I'm watching the comments still. Please go to a Holy Spirit-filled church. It might take you three, four, five times to find a real church, beloved, wherever you, you live but it's time to congregate. Just don't go to a prosperity church where all they teach is prosperity only. Yes, the Lord is, is the one that creates the wealth, but it's not only about wealth, it's about repentance and becoming your life of sanctification. Follow the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit and get baptized. Until next time, remember that Jesus Christ loves you and I love you too. God bless you.